but you're impossible. I need a miracle. What's got you barely hanging by a single thread? What looks so hopeless now? Weighs down your heart with doubt. Beg for a breakthrough, but no sign.
destiny. Can we reach to him? Can we reach to him today? He's a prayer answering God today. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to God. Don't stop praying for the sin. Stop praying, child of God. Be careful for nothing, but in all things by prayer and supplication, let your request be made unto, unto God. Amen. God's a prayer answering God. Keep asking, keep knocking, keep seeking. Amen. God's a prayer answering God. Today you've got a need. Today we've got a God. All you do is let your petitions be known unto Him. Amen, 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 amen. Well, aren't you glad to be in the house of God today? Why don't you give him a great big hand clap of praise? Amen, 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 amen. Well, it's good to be in God's house on Sunday morning. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Don't you love this presence? Amen. Why don't you lift your hands? Why don't you love him one more time? God's so good to us. He's so mindful of us, church family. So thoughtful of us. He cares for us today. Cast all your care on him today. We can cast our cares on him. He don't ever sleep. He don't ever slumber. He knows every need, every situation today. Oh, thank you, Jesus. It is so good to be in God's house this morning. It's good to have our guests with us. Good to have Jamie Massey back with us in the house of the Lord this morning. And certainly good to have Brother Couch home. Amen. And we want to go to the Lord in prayer this morning. For special request for Brother Grafton. Amen. For a touch of healing. Sister Elizabeth for healing today. Uh, Tammy Collins for special needs, and uh, Brother Robert asks that we pray for Ladyville store that it don't close. Amen. That's all right. Amen. We want to continue to remember Sister Brenda today, Brother Rusty, and that God's working. Amen. Any other request today you'd like to show by lifting your hand? And won't you take that other hand, lift it up? Let's reach out. Let's talk to him. Can we do it? God, we love you today. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your touch, God. Already in this house today, God, you, you see these needs today, God. You, you touch these sick bodies, God. You strengthen and stretch forth your hand of healing and deliverance and victory, Lord. God, you're the healer today. You're the deliverer. You're the every need supplier, the need of salvation, these special requests today. You know the needs of your people, God. You know the burdens of your people, God. Lord, every need in this house today, thank you, God. Lord, for being that prayer answering God that you always are. Lord, we give you the praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. He hears prayer today. God answers prayer today. Amen, amen, amen. Something just rolling over in my mind today in the book of Jude. The Bible talked about Jude. He, was, uh, he said, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me that I write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. 
and uh, through this course of this chapter and and uh, and also second peter chapter 2 kind of wrote and some of the same things that jude wrote here but he talked about he talked about the children of israel have i want you to know that god having delivered the children out of the land of egypt he he destroyed them that believe not he talked about he talked about the days of noah and the flood come and he talked about the angels that left their first estate and uh and also talked about uh, just uh, this this end time and this thing but it what really stuck out to me today and of course the the uh the two things that that caused all of this to happen and he's telling us to diligently seek and and contend for for this faith and this truth but they had two things in common they had they were they were filthy dreamers they 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 walked after their own flesh and their own lust the lust of their own flesh but another thing that they did was that the bible said peter said that they despise government and and uh, jude said they despise dominion and uh, I, I thought about this and this this verse of, of scripture here when I when I read this this morning in this in the light of this but they speak these things but these speak evil of those things listen to this which they know not but what they know naturally as brute beasts and those things they corrupt the things that they think that they they got it here human humanism human thinking man loves and his own self and and he's worked this out on his own and he's went by his own wisdom and his own knowledge and his own understanding and in those things they corrupt themselves and this is this is the fruit of some of the things. Woe unto them, for they've gone in the way of Cain. We all know about Cain. They ran greedily after the arrow of Balaam for reward. They perished in the gainsaying of Korah. You know, when they said, man of God, we, we're a holy people. We, we, we know how to pray. We know how to live for God. We don't need you. And that's, that's what thinking of all this and working this out get you when you you know in a sense of the way you've seen it and I've seen it they've decided that they've got this worked out on their own they got this worked out on their own and they're going to do that and they've literally what they've done is they've they've taken the priesthood into their own hands they've said I'm going to be my own pastor I don't, I don't need you. I mean, I pray. I live for God. I go to church. I do. I do. You know, the Bible tells us in the book of Romans chapter 13, he said, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there are no powers but of God. Right. And the powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power Resisteth the ordinance of God. And you know who he's talking about? For he is the minister of God to thee for good. You know, God's always, that's, that's what he pointed out here. One of those two main things is they despised government. They despised, I mean, I'm going to do this on my own. I'm going to work this out on my own. And it's, it's a sad, this is what happens. These are spots in your feasts of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water. Carried about with winds. Trees whose fruit withereth without fruit. Twice dead, plucked up by the roots. This is what happens to people that figure their own way and do their own thing, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars to whom, the, to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. That's what happens to people when they work things out on their own. 
I thought about it, you know, it was apostolic preaching that brought me into this. Amen. It's going to be apostolic preaching that's going to take me out of yes. here. And if I've ever treasured this truth, and let me tell you something, we're not smart enough to this, figure this out on our own. We don't have enough wisdom. We don't have enough knowledge. We don't have enough understanding. This is all God's ordination. This is his church. This is his ministry. This is all about what God does in the earth. And God is going to save us by preaching. God's going to save us through an apostolic ministry. And if we ever get to the point where we're going to figure this out on our own and work this out on our own, we get in really, really, really bad trouble. Aren't you glad for truth today? I'm just glad to be here. I'm glad today, amen, that I love preaching. Amen. I love this truth today. But the preacher can't preach it too hard for me. Amen. You can't tell me if you got to come and put your nose on the end of my finger, Bishop. You go ahead and do that because I mean to be saved because I know what this flesh will do. And I don't trust my flesh, but I want to trust in that word. I want to listen to what God says and the direction what God says. Hey, I'm going to tell you, we're living in the generation in the hour. You look what this world has done. Men calling themselves women and women calling themselves men. You're looking at a, a world of permissiveness and just thinking their own way and doing their own thing and how corrupt. Now, none of us are exempt from that. Thank God for straight bell preaching to just will tell me how to live and how to walk, how to treat my neighbor, how to love God, how to come to church, how to give my best. Hey, this is about being saved and this is about going to heaven. Thank God for apostolic truth. I'm proud of it. I'm thankful for it. I'm not ashamed of it. I'm glad for it today. Preacher, preach to me. Let me hear it one more time. Amen. Why don't you give the Lord a great big hand clap of praise? Aren't you glad for apostolic truth? Amen, amen. It is liberty today. This is not a grievance. I'm not bound today. Thank God for liberty. Liberty to live free from sin. Amen. Liberty to feel the presence of an almighty God. Amen. Liberty to lay my head on my pillow and know, to know that I'm right with God. That's what apostolic preaching will do for us. Yeah. Woo. Well, I'm thankful for preaching. Aren't you? Aren't you glad? Amen. To be in the house of God. Aren't you glad to be apostolic? To be a part of an apostolic truth? Amen. One, one more time. Clap your hands for the Lord. Come on, Brother Spence. Amen. Lead us in a song or two. Whatever. Amen. Let's worship God. Breathe on me, breathe on me, Holy Ghost power, breathe on me, yesterday's gone, but today I'm in need, Holy Ghost power, breathe on me. Today I'm in need Holy Ghost shower Rain on me Rain on me Rain on me Holy Ghost shower Rain on me Cause yesterday's gone But today I'm in need Holy Ghost shower 
Father, I see that you are drawing a line in the sand, and I want to be standing on your side, holding your hand. So let your kingdom come and let it live in me. This is my prayer. This is my plea. See that you are drawing a line in the sand, and I want to be standing on your side, holding your hand. So let your kingdom come and let it live in me. This is my prayer, this is my plea. Let the worshiper. The sons and the daughters sing. I'm surrendering my all. I surrender to the King. Let the worshipers arise. Let the sons and the daughters sing. Surrender is my own. I surrender to the King. Oh, Father, I hear it growing louder. The song of your redeemed as the saints of every nation are in the sea. There comes an anthem. Oh, hear the heavens ring. This is our song. A song to our King. Let the worshipers arise. Let the sons and the daughters sing. I'm surrender. Surrender to the King. Let the worshipers arise. Let the 
worship the Lord in our giving.
you, Lord. Praise you, God. Praise you, Holy God. What a good God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your awesome presence, your wonderful presence, your awesome working, your divine touching God. He is so mindful. God, you are so abundantly mindful. Every need be touched with the feelings, the feelings, the feelings of our infirmities. Amen. Thank you for doing it, God. Turn to the book of Isaiah chapter 40, if you will, please. Good to be in the house of the Lord. Good church with Brother Allen Wednesday night. Good service in Arkansas. Meeting Friday night and... Uh, but always good to be back home. Uh, we got to see folks we hadn't seen. I, I dare launch out and say some of them in a decade or two, so that's always good. I know folks are still continuing on in the Lord. Isaiah chapter 40, if you have it, say amen. Begin reading with verse 28. Hast thou not known? Hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, Jehovah, the creator of the ends of the earth, feigneth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. Everybody say God's doing okay. The, the problem would never be with God. God's doing okay. Verse 29, he giveth power to the faint. Been there. I've had that touch. To them that have no might, he increases strength. I've been there. I've had that touch. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, you know. As you go older, people want to blame everything on old age. It's not always the case. Many years ago when they tried to tell Brother Chandler that his knee problem was, was old age, he said, no, my other knee's not bothering me a bit. It's just as old as that one. He tried to remedy himself. Somebody told him if he'd put a little WD-40 on it and rub it in that uh, it would help with the pain. And he thought, well, if a little bit does a little good and a whole lot will do a lot good, he rubbed both his legs down with WD-40, went straight to bed and went to sleep. And minutes later, he was running up and down the hall, beating his chest, trying to get his breath, like to kill himself. So what I'm telling you is don't try the WD-40. Trust God. Hallelujah. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But he said it happens. But they, there's another group of people, they that wait. That's a good text, just they that wait. They that wait upon the Lord, and it does matter who you're waiting for shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Young folks might, but they that wait on the Lord. Young men might, but they that wait what an incredible promise. You want to walk, you want to run, you want to fly. I, I thought for a while about uh, how did Brother Campbell put that? It, it took me a while. I kept leaning back. I'd just go on studying and then I'd go back and say, now how did he say that? And uh, I finally 
work through it the best my age and brain could. Fly if you can, run if you will, walk if you must, but don't faint. That's pretty good encouragement. That's pretty good advice. That he is. Teach me, Lord, to wait. That's what the song says. But you know, if you're going to teach me to wait, I probably need to learn what waiting really means. I probably need to learn how to define what it really means to wait on the Lord. And if I'm going to learn that, all I got to do is ask Siri. Alexia. Lexi, amen. I've stayed in a few homes that almost talked to Lexi as much as we talk. AI's got the answer, but it don't mean it's right. But the book's got the answer, and it's always right. I believe that. So if I'm going to learn what it is to wait, I'm not going to ask Siri. And I'm not going to consider what AI thinks. They tell me now they're getting this AI down so, so well. All you got to do is, if you're a preacher, just tell it, well, put me together a sermon on faith. Don't you come up here preaching to me what AI says. I still want to hear from God. I still want to hear from the Holy Ghost. Can I get a witness? But uh, somebody said, well, I'm just waiting on my wings. That's a pretty good thought. Amen. But what does it really mean to wait? Let's talk to the Lord. Father, thank you for this congregation of people. Thank you, Lord God, for our privilege of being here. Thank you for what's going on with our teachers and our Sunday school classes and those that have been bust in today. You touch their lives. You make an impact on their heart. Uh, let it be a spiritual experience that they find. Do the same in this house and in this Bible class. Uh, touch those that are on the road this weekend, God. Keep them safe for your glory. In Jesus' name, and all the church said amen. Before you sit down, Let's do one more thing because I just can't seem to get away from this. But we, we have prayed in some weeks past for Brother John Wilson. Uh, he continues to be in need of prayer, though uh, we are claiming and believing he is doing better. So uh, I want us to pray for Brother Wilson. And uh, hopefully most of you remember who I'm talking about. Young man full of scripture. And we told you that some Weeks ago when we prayed especially for him. But let's do that again in Jesus' name. Father, God, you touch our brother. Critical needs that are here. Physical needs, God. Spiritual needs in the midst of the battle. Underneath, Lord, are your everlasting arms. And we're asking you to undergird him, to strengthen him, to help him. Moravakaya rosso rivikida da corosso. By the name of Jesus Christ, thank you for touching our brother. Thank you for hearing our united prayers, for honoring our united effort, God, at Apostolic Tabernacle. And everybody said in Jesus' name. And uh, I, I, I think, I just feel in my, in my heart, my spirit, that uh, Tuesday night we're going to take up a special offering for Brother and Sister Wilson and uh, want to be somewhat of a blessing. I don't really know what's going on there. Haven't heard, don't have a clue. I do know what I feel in my spirit. So Tuesday night would regularly be a building fund night, and we're going to focus that for Brother and Sister Wilson, if you'll keep that in mind, and Sister Marie will help me remember in Jesus' name. You may be seated. God bless you. What a patient congregation. You're learning to wait <laughs> by experience. Waiting, how could we break it down? Waiting simply means believing that God is faithful, that his promise is true, that our God that promised us anything is faithful to his faithful people. 
Somebody said one time, and it's become a cliche, and I'm sure you've heard it somewhere down the road, and we've quoted it, and we've applied certain things to it because it's been added to, however long it's been around. Good things come to those that wait. And one of our presidents, it's noted, said that, but only the things that are left by those that hustle. So, you know, don't, what, what he was saying was don't, don't use the idea of waiting as an excuse for doing nothing. Nothing happens to folks that do nothing. Waiting is not defined as doing nothing. And we're defining it as simply believing God promised it. God can't fail. God's going to do his work. God's going to accomplish his purpose. And I'm just going to trust him. How have we described it in the past? When Job said, I went forward and I couldn't find him. I'm in a dilemma here. My health's broken. My family's gone. My encouragement's gone. I'm, not, I'm, I'm just here by myself. I need God. And I went up here and I couldn't find him. And I went back here and I couldn't find him. And I went to the right and I went places that I've seen him work before. And I drew a blank on all of it. But Job can be a great definition of patience, which is part of waiting. But again, we're not talking about doing nothing. So since he's not seemingly there or there or there or there, but I still know he's here and I still know he's looking and I still know he's watching and I know that he knows I'm just going to sit right here and believe him. I'm just going to sit right here and see how God finishes this up because I know he's looking and I know he's got me in this trial uh, and I know when this trial is over, I'm not going to come out of this for the worse. I don't know how he's going to do it, but I'm going to come forth like go. I'm going to be a better Job than I was when I went into it. Now, I'm telling you what, it's a really good thing Job was a praying man. It's a really good thing. Job didn't find this relationship with God just because he went into a trial. Job had this relationship with God, and it was, it was according to his own words, uh, it, it was purified by the heat of the trial. His faith didn't diminish. He was standing for truth, standing for what's right, uh, you know, being told all of these things. And you know, a lot of the things that Job's comforters told him, uh, I've, I've seen men take text and and uh, use those things because they were true things. Now, maybe they didn't realize if you don't look and see often who's talking through the book of Job, you don't know if it's Job or God or, or one of his three Job's comforters that uh, was, was trying to convince him that the problem was all him. So Good things come to those who wait if they understand what it means to wait. You only get wings through patience. You only get wings through effort. You only get wings through faithfulness. Standing on the promises is quite different than just sitting on the premises. When you're standing on the promises, there's an effort that's required of you. When you're standing on the promises, there's a testimony that is required of you. That's what Job was giving us. I know, I know, I know, I know. And, and there's a faithfulness. I've not gone back from the commandment of his lips. This, this hasn't knocked living for God out of me. This hasn't knocked going to church out of me. This hasn't knocked a prayer life out of me. I've not gone back from the commandment of his lips, but I have esteemed the words of his mouth more 
than my necessary food. So the, the, the command, the mandate, the exhortation, the encouragement of Jesus Christ when he talked about the end, uh, there was a lot of negatives. It's going to be like this, like this, like this, like this, like this, we fun. There was a lot of negatives. But the one thing that he did say was occupy till I come. I believe we could properly say, he said, wait till I get back. But he didn't mean just go over here and hide in a cave. That's what Elijah tried. And when God, can I just use an anthropomorphism? When God found him in the cave, he said, uh, what are you doing here, Elijah? Now, there's two ways you can take that. Number one, you can take it, why are you here? What brought you to this place? Well, we know he got there on the strength of angels' food. So there's another thing you can look at, and uh, he said, what are you doing here? Since you are here, since you are in this situation, what are you doing? So in our condition of waiting on the promise and waiting on God and, and understanding God never fails, what are we doing in the waiting? What are we accomplishing in the waiting? So occupy, that's the word we get occupation from. That's the root word. It means work. Work till I come. Wait on me. Be patient unto the coming of the Lord is how it is, it is in the scripture. Waiting for the coming of the Lord. We're getting ready to show that to you so we can understand. We're just trying to get an understanding of what God really means when he says, they that wait upon the Lord. First Corinthians 1, 7, so that you come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of of our Lord Jesus Christ. So you're not going backward while you're waiting. You're not losing stuff. You're not getting behind. The gifts ought to be working. Faith ought to be working. The things of God ought to be working. He's telling this to Corinth, and Corinth had more problems, they used to say, than, than Carter's got liver pills. So that's way out of most of folks' place. We're trusting God anyway. So as you come behind and no gift, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall also confirm you unto the end that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. So uh, if you're coming behind and no gift, it means you're utilizing this. You know, you use it or you lose it. The more you exercise something, the more adept you become at it. The more capable you become at it, the more able you are in, in doing what you're doing. So right in the middle of some end time teaching. Now he's talking about, Paul's talking about to, to Corinth, you're waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But, but you're not hiding while you're doing that. You're having church while you're doing that. You're having good church while you're doing that. The gifts of God are moving. Folks are praising God. We're learning how to love one another while we're doing that. Corinth had a little problem in that area. Had a big problem in that area. You're learning what, what forbearance and, and harmony and unity is while we're waiting for the coming of the Lord because uh, God has promised that he will confirm you unto the end that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. None of us can save ourselves, but we're told to save ourselves. What well, we're never told anything to do that we can't do with his help. So with his help, he has confirmed us, how long? Unto the end. So just hang in there. You ever heard that? That's a cliche also. And I, I realize when you, when you feel like you're on your last limb and, and, and things are as bad as they can get, or at least we're imagining, we forgot how bad things were before. Or we, so we're imagining it's about, we forgot God moved in. We didn't think we was ever going to get through that. And that's been how long ago? And now here we are. And we done forgot about that. Let's build on that. 
He did it then. He brought me to here. I don't know how God's going to do it. He's going to do it now. He's going to bring me on from here. And I'm going to look back and say, thank you, Lord. It was worth waiting for. It was worth waiting for my wings. It was worth just, just being consistent and staying faithful and being dedicated. So right in the middle of this end time teaching and prophecy, Jesus admonished in your patience. Luke 21, 19. Memorize it. We'll need it. We'll all need it. And it's something I've been up here how long now? Hadn't even talked about the war in Israel. They never seem to worry about the war overseas. When they see a need, they just fall on their knees. The praying kind of people are the kind I like to be around. Well, somebody said, do you see scripture being fulfilled? I really did. Wars and rumors of wars. So that's, that's one of the signs of the end. But right in the middle of this, he's, he's describing all of these things. He said, in your patience, possess ye your soul. Now, what, what, what's he talked about before he got to there? Number one, which is always number one, don't be deceived. Deception. The end time is going to be rampant with deception. Be not deceived. That's at the top of the list. I heard it quoted this morning already. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you, I thought it was needful to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints for certain men are crept in. And this is the word to focus on. Unawares who were foreordained. For this, uh, for this condemnation. So the, the, the church has been predestined for trial. It's been predestined to prove itself. The church has been predestined to fight for truth. And we're doing it. And we're doing it in the midst of the last day. Somebody said Friday night, I don't think anybody would argue that we're living in the end time. Well, that sounds good. And we probably really shouldn't argue. But there are some folks that would argue about it. Because there's some strange doctrines. But, but the idea that these certain men crept in undetected. What's that mean? It must mean they look like us. It must mean they talked like us. It must mean... They acted like us, that they pretended to be us, or they wouldn't have been unaware. But these certain men crept in with this, uh, with, with this junk and this baggage that they brought with them. So right on the top of the list, listen to me. Don't be deceived. You better know where your voice is in your life. You better know where you're supposed to be getting guidance and spiritual leadership and answers in your life because there's something out there just waiting for you to be distracted to deceive you and it's going to look good. Well, only two things. There's truth and deception. Nothing in between those, nothing around those, just those two things. And, and as long as we recognize that, we, we want to be in position to always love and have and hold truth. So then he goes on and talks about wars, commotions, earthquakes, famines, pestilences, persecutions, betrayals. And then he says, just hang in there. Did he? In your patience, just right sandwich, right in the middle of all this stuff about what's going to be going on in the end time. Just hang in there. In your patience, possess ye your souls. Mm. One rendition says, in your patience, you'll win your souls. Another one said, by your patient endurance, you'll gain your souls. Just keep on living for God. You know how to live for God? I've told you this, but it's been a long, long time ago. But when we were preaching for Brother 
uh, Roy Riley for the first time, preaching revival for the first time. He just had a way of doing things. One thing he'd done, he, he, he took a young evangelist aside and said, now look, when you get up tonight, you preach as long as you want to preach. Well, that's good to hear. But he said, there'll be a number of our folks leave at 9 o'clock. Just wanted you to know. They worked some kind of factory job. That's the best way he could put it. I guess he didn't want me to be shocked if, if you know, half a dozen folks walked out at 9 o'clock and wondered, what did I say? Praise God. So I got that. But then another thing that stood out with me is during the course of all that, I was there one day, Brother uh, Riley and I at the church. I think we might have been praying. And uh, some sister comes in, and she's, she's in pandemonium. She just come from drama class. She's full of, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do, Brother Riley. Brother Riley, I don't know what to do. Now, he don't even, he, I, I guess he don't. And I'm thinking, God help this lady. Brother Riley, help this lady. This, this lady, she's in pandemonium. I mean, she was tore up. And uh, Brother Riley, he just, he never blinked an eye. He said, uh, sister, you know how to do right? And it just, it just stopped her right there. She stopped. She looked at him. She said, well, yeah, I know how to do right. She said, just do right. Everything will work out. Man, is that profound? Some of the simplest things that there is is, oh, what am I going to do? I'm going to live for God. I'm going to pray another prayer. I'm going to show up for church when I'm supposed to be at church. I'm going to be in another prayer meeting. I'm going to lift up the hands of the saints of God and thank God for those that are lifting up my hands. Woo. I know what to do. Just keep on living for God and serving the Lord and following the Holy Ghost. And then... And then there's some other warnings in this. Some of these warnings say, uh, because iniquity shall abound. You seeing any of that? Man, they, they got sins I couldn't have thought of in 100 years. They just keep coming up with more sins. Because iniquity shall abound. You notice this transgender thing is kind of, the pendulum's kind of coming back. You know why it's coming back? They got some of these kids now that's got old enough to stand up and say, what have they done to me? And instead of, instead of them setting those kids down and saying, look, you need to get off that internet and you need to get away from that stupid stuff that's messing with your head. There's, there's not but two genders and you were born one of them uh, and that's how you're going to die. Nothing's going to change that. You just need to get this nonsense out of your head well, you don't have a gender problem. you got a head problem. And you need somebody to talk to you real straight. And now they're wishing that it had been that way. And the lawsuits are flying. And they ought to be flying. Any of these doctors or whatever they call themselves and, and, and persons uh, that, that are supposed to be so caring. Because, oh, we're going we're to keep them from committing suicide. No, you're pushing them into suicide. All you got to do now is just follow the stats and you see that doesn't work grossly against the Bible, grossly against the creator, grossly against an almighty God, uh, grossly against common sense uh, itself. And now it's swinging back and the cries are going forth and, and we're praying for folks, man. I just like to pray everybody through the Holy Ghost. If you're listening to me in this service today, the Holy Ghost is your answer. If you're listening to me outside of this service today, I wish you were here. Some of you probably ought to be here. But the Holy Ghost is your answer. Clap your hands, all you people, in Jesus' name. So iniquity shall abound, and the love of many shall wax cold. What did he tell the Ephesus church? He said, you've left your first love. Can I paraphrase a little bit? You don't love me like you used to. You're just not crazy about me. I'm going to use Brother, brother uh, Cox's terminology. Well, Cal, I'm just crazy about you. Jesus, I'm just crazy about you. Man. 
But Ephesus wasn't crazy about him like they used to be. You don't love me like you used to. You still got the doctrine. You still got the message. You still stand against certain things. But your passion's not. There's no thrill. And I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into, well, I just don't feel like that, Brother Couch. I, I don't know what to do. Get renewed in the Holy Ghost because you're not. Get refilled with the Holy Ghost. Woo! All your problems won't dissolve, but you ought to be thrilled about coming to church. Casting your cares on him. Loving a God that loved you when you were unlovable. Caring for a God that cared for you when you didn't care about yourself. Thanking him for this great salvation. What a privilege. Uh, that's the first thing I tell him. Thank you, Lord. What a privilege uh, to be back in your house. Uh, to know you're real. To know you're working. Uh, to know I love you and to know you still love me. Hey, that's awesome. Uh, I got plenty of reasons uh, to give God praise. But I got a phone call coming home yesterday, and uh, we, we were trying to, we wanted to make it home for uh, prayer meeting, but we knew we couldn't because of the timing of what we were involved in there. And so we left as quick as we could and uh, had a good front door and almost made record time, but it was still just after prayer meeting. But uh, anybody like prayer meeting? Hallelujah. So I got this phone call on the way home, and uh, the young pastor said, Brother Couch, I need, I need some advice. I need some help. And uh, I said, okay. He said, well, what do I do about people missing too much church? It just seems like they don't really want to come to church. And uh, he said, it's, it's just a good thing. And he, he threw a percentage out there. He said, out of this many people, there's a certain percentage that are always missing. Now, not all at the same time. The problem is this one will miss this weekend and the other one will miss. The, and it's almost like they're, they're just taking turns. Missing. Well, thank you, Holy Ghost. And uh, so, just preach them into hell, brother. Just tell them. No. I said, well, just keep doing what you're doing because all you're wanting to do is transpose your conviction. Because I, I knew him as a young man and before he was a pastor and the conviction in his heart and his faithfulness to the house of God. And I said, all you're wanting to do is transpose that that's in your heart and in the Bible to these folks. But, uh, and then we got off on this, the love of many shall wax cold. This is where we are living. Don't just come to church. Love to come to church. Don't just praise. Love to praise. You got to fight for that. You got to fight for that. You got to fight for that. You going to tell me you got married and you were madly in love? I don't know if my mind's even up to it or not. What, what have I? Woo. How, do I how did I say it? These young folks come to the pastor and they got this ideal. Man, we're in love. Never met nobody like them. Never been nobody like them. Oh, I've thought I've been in love before, but I ain't never been in love like I'm in love now. And it's love, 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 love. And it's just dripping with honey. It's the ideal. And it takes about six months after the I do's until it's an ordeal. And then if they don't get help and get that recognizing that marriage has trouble in the flesh. It wasn't like you saw on TV if you were slipping around watching TV. It's not like you read in the Harlots and Romance book. I said it like I wanted to say it. It wasn't like that. So now you, you got this ordeal and you get to thinking about it. And if your eyes get to Roman or you get to allowing the enemy to work on you, you get to thinking this is a raw deal. How do I get out of it? Then you want a new deal. 
And new deals don't work with God. New deals don't work with God. Young pastor told me, he said, you know, my, my grandpa, before he died, went back and read all this stuff about divorce and remarriage and, and one wife for the preacher. And, and uh, you know, he, he went back and he reread it. He changed his mind about it. I said, really? I said, you know, I'm sorry for your grandpa. I went back and reread it. And when I got through reading it, it read exactly like it did the first time I read it. And I ain't changed my mind about a thing. If you're not qualified to pastor a church, you're just not qualified. If you're not qualified to be a preacher, you're just not qualified. If you're not qualified to go to heaven, you better get qualified. Don't go to hell. Let God help you. Can I get a witness? That, that's part of the love of many waxing cold. Baptists used to have more sense than that. They read the Bible. They know what Jesus said. One, one preacher said it's something like this. I'm going to do it as close as I said, man, they, they're down on me because of this and this and this. And that's just an opinion. And I'm standing for what Jesus said. And they can read the same thing that Jesus said. And that ain't no big deal to them. They're not going to do what Jesus said. But they're going to hold to their opinion. If it come hell or high water, they're going to hold to their opinion. What a day. The love of many wax cold. I love what Jesus said. If it, if it, if it goes against the grain, this is still the perfect law of liberty. If it comes against me, if it comes against my kids, if it comes against my grandkids, if it comes against the saints, it's still right. Uh, I love this word. I love this book. Don't change it. Uh, leave it alone. Uh, if you leave it alone, it'll get you to heaven. Uh, if you leave it alone, it'll straighten you up. Uh, if you leave it alone, uh, the engrafted word will save you. Just leave it alone. Be seated. Thank you so much. The love of many shall wax cold. I, I don't know if I helped the young brother or not. He seemed like he did. You know, okay. Maybe he just, maybe he just wanted somebody to tell him, don't feel like the Lone Ranger. We're all preaching through this end time. There is no perfect situation. Let's just keep preaching truth. Don't compromise with the careless. Don't compromise with the calloused. Just, just preach, and uh, I've seen the Word of God affect enough people to know the problem's not with the Word. Woo, the problem's always going to be back on the hearer. So, um, mm, you know what? I woke up this morning praying for that young pastor and saying, God, you help those saints of God up there to understand that they'd, they'd much rather have a concerned watchman in their life than an unconcerned watchman. Hallelujah. A watchman that say, hey, if you, don't, if you don't straighten up a little bit, it's not going to come out good for you. It's not going to work the best for you. You got to do it like God said. It's maybe a self-loving generation, but you better escape that. Maybe a self-centered generation, you better escape that. It may, it may be an I and me and mine generation, but you better shake yourself from that. That's not the generation of Jesus Christ. That's not who God is coming back for. This is not about God pleasing you. This is about us pleasing God, about us satisfying God, about us doing the will of God. And when we get down to the details, uh, all right, God, the problem starts when we're so in love with ourselves, we don't care how it affects God. That's the problem I have with backsliders. I love backsliders. I do love backsliders. I'm kind to backsliders. But the way they, and, and I can handle how they treat me. But I have a problem with how they treat God. I'm telling you, it, it does something in here when I realize how they treat God that's been so good to them and so kind to them. Ooh, I, can, I can handle how they treat the church. And that's not always good. But when it comes down to how they treat my God, he deserves better than that. 
Can I get a witness? Thank God. I'm going to say it again. Thank God for a concerned watchman. God, you touched that assembly this morning and you let them realize the voice of that young man in that pulpit is a concerned watchman. He didn't call me asking, how can I get more money out of the people or how can I make my job easier? He called me with a concern. Thank God for the voice of a concerned watchman. Are you here? So the love of many shall wax cold. That was verse 12. Matthew 24 verse 13 said, but he that shall endure to the end. Let's break down endure. This is what we got to do. This is part of waiting. We're waiting on the coming of the Lord. This is, this is part of endure to the end. So that word endure, stay under, remain. Everybody said hang in there. Bear trials, have fortitude, persevere. Woo. James said we count them happy that endure, that stay under, that hang in there. That is if you know the story. See, I'm up here preaching about Job early on, and you know the story, and you know how it comes out, and it come out real good, and never even showed him heaven yet. I'm telling you, the latter end of Job's life was better than the first or more blessed than the first, but we never even got to see heaven. So we we count them happy or blessed, uh, which endure. And then James goes on and says, uh, we've heard of the patience of Job. We've seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful. Now let's, let's give that the meaning it's supposed to have here. You know, we think about pitiful as whiny and cry and compassionate is the word. And of tender mercy. So endure unto the end. The same shall be saved. Do you think that's synonymous within your patience, possess ye your souls? That is synonymous with that. You'll be saved. But don't miss verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world. What's that telling me? Some of them waiters are workers. Some of them waiters are laborers. They're occupying until he comes. They're going to be preaching until Jesus gets here. Or until somebody cuts their head off or their tongue out. They're going to be doing the way somebody says, oh, Brother Couch, that's not real exciting. Well, you know, martyrs. There's a lot of good testimonies about martyrs for Christ. I know we're we're easy living generation, make everything easier, and I want everything on a silver platter and give it to me. I don't want to work for it. That don't work, folks. That don't work. How come I got it? I don't have it. Somebody else has got it. They worked and you didn't. They, They understood the process and you didn't. Help me, Lord. How am I getting on that? Everybody said somebody's working. Somebody's praying for laborers. Somebody's holding up the ministry. Somebody's holding up the missionaries. Somebody's praying, send me, Jesus. Use me, Jesus. Uh, Help me, Jesus. Uh, Let me do something for you. Don't let me go through my life uh, and do all my living for me uh, and forget that the greatest reason I am here uh, is that I can do my best for God. Uh, I want to fulfill my life in God. Clap your hands to the Lord. So... In our waiting, we're not just taking the punches. We're not just going with the flow. We're not just holding the fort. We're militant. We're pressing in prayer. We're pressing in in worship. We're pressing in witness. We We are pressing in this Let your light so shine before men that they might see your good works. We're we're not talking about self-righteousness. We're just talking about every day living for God. The admonishment to wait 
has never been a right to stop. The admonishment to wait has never meant quit doing. There is something to be said about the doing. Pray and not faint. What's that mean? That means pray till the answer comes. And then keep on praying about other answers. Pray and not faint. Just keep on. Galatians 6, 9, let us not be weary and well. Everybody said doing. That's the right doing, well doing, right doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So the choice is on us. I can keep on and reap or I can quit. Well, I'm just waiting on God. No, 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 no. Waiting on God is never quitting as we have therefore opportunity let us everybody said do good Ooh, there it is again well doing right doing do good unto all men especially unto them who are of the household of faith so i'm not necessarily just waiting on my walking i'm not waiting on my running. I may be waiting on my wings if we got to fly. The old black preacher got up and uh, got the church all excited and said, uh, if, if we going to go places for God, we got to crawl. And they hollered back, let's crawl. If we going to go places in God, we got to walk. And they hollered back, let's walk. And said, if we go places in God, we got to run. Uh, let's run. If we go places in God, we're going to have to fly. And they said, let's fly. Woo. Let her walk. Let her run. Let her fly. Said, and if we fly, it's going to take greenback to fly. And they said, let her crawl. <laughs> Woo. Hallelujah. Well, you ever heard the old cliche? It is a cliche. Put your money where your mouth is. Uh, let's just do more for God. Uh, let's just accomplish more for God. I want to pray better prayers than I've ever prayed uh, because I'm waiting on God. Uh, it's no time to quit. It's no time to get lazy. Uh, it's no time to look back. Uh, it's no time to be discouraged. It's no time uh, to throw our hands up. Uh, it's time to do for God. Uh, if you can walk, walk. Uh, if you can run, run, run. Uh, if you can fly, fly. Uh, but don't quit. Uh, give it your best shot uh, for God. Yeah. Maybe I'm about to. You can be seated. So just because we're waiting, no reason to give up. Mm. Get the drift. Do all we can. Press all we can. Don't get weary in well-doing. But how do you do that? If you're tired, you're tired. Well, there's a tired and there's a tired. There's a tired that affects you here physically. There's a tired that affects you here mentally. The only way to take care of that tired, unless, you know, you, there are special touches of God. We've, some of us have had them. Just totally feel like couldn't put another step in front of, in front of the other. But man, I got to preach three times today. What am I going to do, God? Ooh, let me help you out. Mm, I love that help. Thank God for that help. But, but I'm telling somebody. I'm encouraging somebody. Don't get weary in here. You can, put this, you can put this fleshly body down and let it sleep a few hours. It's going to come back. That's God's plan. You, you can, you know, do something here. Man, maybe there are uh, things that... that are distractions that are worthy distractions and give a little mental rest, but don't you let it happen in here. And that is up to you. Our God would have never said, be not weary uh, in well-doing. Uh, I'm going to keep on doing what I know to do. Uh, I'm going to keep on living what I know to live. Uh, I'm not giving in to the enemy. I'm not giving up to the adversary. Uh, I am not going to get distracted from the purpose. Uh, it's too late in the game. Uh, it's too late in the hour. Uh, it's too late in the end time. Uh, we're running the last mile. So waiting and patience 
has been a promise and a reward to every generation that's ever existed. Let me finish with just a, a little reading, some few scriptures. It's not, it's not just about us. It's not woe is us. We're in the end time and nobody's had it as bad as us. Nobody's had as much grace as we got. Nobody's had as many promises as we got. Nobody's had any greater God than what we got. Woo, hallelujah. So thank God that we've been called to this in time. Genesis 49, 18, I have waited for thy salvation, O Lord. And if we're saved in whatever situation, it's going to be because we learn to properly define and utilize wait. Isaiah 25, 9, and it shall be said in that day, lo, this is our God. We have waited for him and he will save us. This is the Lord Jehovah. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his. I'm, I'm talking about, this is a bunch of folks in generation after generation that was glad they didn't give up. They just kept on keeping on. Psalm 27, 13, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord. What did I tell you? Waiting, was just claiming that promise, holding on by faith. Ooh, unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, wait on the Lord, be of good courage. He shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Oh, there's bunches of them. I'm thinking them now that I don't even have wrote down. There's just bunches of them in there. Hey, I waited patiently upon the Lord. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, set my feet on the rock, established my going. Did God do all that for us? Woo! We just waited for him to work. We just waited for him to do his thing, and he's done it. Psalm 37, 8, cease from anger. Forsake wrath. Fret not, don't worry. Thyself in any wise to do evil, for evildoers shall be cut off. Just wait. But those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Wait on the Lord, verse 34. Keep his way. Keep his way. Wait on the Lord and twiddle your thumbs. Wait on the Lord and stay in bed because you don't feel good, because you're depressed. You're going to sleep your depression off. Woo. Wait on the Lord. Get you another shot of drug. Right. No, wait on the Lord. Keep his way. And he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. It's going to be all right. Uh, it's going to work out okay. Just hang in there. Just do what you know to do. Preach to me again, preacher. Remind me again, preacher. Uh, I'm not going to walk out without applying this. Uh, I'm not going to walk out and forget what manner of person, uh, how this looked when I was looking right at a Bible class or right at some preaching here. Whichever one this is, I I don't know. I don't know. Woo, hallelujah. I'm talking to somebody who has forgotten that when quitting seems easy, going on makes a whole lot more sense. Never is it in your Bible to stop, to quit, but to go to work to do. David had a way of turning his most troubled times into Psalms. Singing about it. The 69th Psalm says to the chief musician upon Shoshanim, a Psalm of David, save me, O God, for the waters are come in unto my soul. I sink in deep mire. Are you getting that? I mean, this is armpit stuff. How do I get out of this? There's nothing to push on. There's nothing to kick off. I mean, I'm in deep mire. I'm, I, I'm, in, I'm in armpit stuff right here. Where there is no standing. I am coming to deep waters where the floods, they're overflowing me. This this just... I'm weary with my crying. I'm talking to somebody today. 
My throat is dried. My eyes fail while I wait for my God. Who said waiting would be easy? What are you going to do, sir? They that hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of my head. Now, that might not be too bad for me, but for some of y'all. They that would destroy me, being my enemies wrongfully, are mighty. There's a bunch of them, and they're tough. Then I restored that which I took not away. Did that make any sense to you right there? What, what, what I, one rendition said, what I didn't steal, I gave back. What I didn't rob, what I didn't get, what I didn't take, I gave back. Then I restored that which I took away. You know what happened all of a sudden? You'll never understand this if you don't realize it quit talking about David. And it got to talking about Jesus. And it became a messianic psalm. And David was being inspired by the Holy Ghost. Because Jesus went to the pit for me. And Jesus faced his enemies for you and I. And, and Jesus suffered the sufferings that, that he suffered because of us. You know what he restored that he didn't take away? What Adam lost. The salvation of our soul. Our right standing with God, our ability to have our sins forgiven for his name's sake, that wasn't his fault. He didn't take that away. All that relationship with God, man done that to himself. But it says, I, I restored it anyway. So we see that the end result for all of us is salvation restored? Verse 35, God will save Zion, that's the church, will build the cities of Judah that they may dwell there and have in it in possession. The seed also of his servants shall inherit it and they that love his name shall dwell therein. Somebody said it's worth the wait. God went through some stuff in the days of his flesh. Uh, why shouldn't we be just as willing to return the favor. Are you with me? I'm about through. Hebrews 10, 34. For you had compassion of me in my bonds, Paul said, and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods. It hadn't been going real good for you, and I know it hadn't, and I know it's, it's cost you greatly, but you still got a smile on your face, knowing in yourself that you have in heaven we better sing that song again. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. I, I wish I could remember all the things that Sister Sanji was singing in that beginning song But I, because I was thinking how fitting, how, how right, uh, how well it fit. Maybe we'll get her later to sing it again, but it fit. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. And then the writer of Hebrews went on and says, hey, knowing in yourselves that you have in heaven. What did Jesus say? Don't lay treasures up here. They can steal that. That can rust down. That can be moth-eaten. That can be corrupted. But if you get something in heaven, if you get a treasure in heaven, can't nothing touch that. I got a reservation in heaven. Huh? I got a reservation after this life is over. Huh? When I check out of here, huh? it's already reserved. Huh? We're going to check in huh? over there. You hanging with me? It is called a better and an enduring Substance, Man, what I got in heaven going to last. Any loss here? He said, you took joyfully the spoiling of your goods. Any loss here for living for Jesus? That's only gain in heaven. Well, anything you give up here? I don't know how many sinners I've told because it's all about, well, you know, if I, can, I can't give up my pants. I can't give up my makeup. I can't give up my girlfriend. Okay. 
But that's a cheap price for heaven. Just don't you forget that everything that you don't give up for God to go to heaven, you'll give it up one day to go to hell. It won't be in hell. You won't find it in hell. And that's eternity. How many still with me? And then he goes into this, this great, after telling them any loss here, folks, is a gain in heaven. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. For you have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them that draw back unto perdition, but unto them that believe. Everybody said, wait. Unto them that believe uh, to the saving of the soul. Believing is never quitting. Uh, it is always patiently enduring uh, until the promise uh, reveals itself in us. One more. Let's stand together. Second Corinthians 4, 16. For this cause, we got a cause. I got a cause to come to church. I had a cause to wake up at 4 o'clock this morning. I had a cause to study this Bible class. I got a cause throughout this day for this cause. We faint not. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed uh, day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment. Can you just wait a minute? Can you just hang in there a minute? Because when you put all of it on the scale of eternity, Paul said, uh, God said, uh, the book said, uh, the longest trial you ever have in your life uh, is only a moment. But for a moment uh, worketh for us a far more exceeding internal weight of glory while we look not at things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen, that's what we're waiting on, are eternal. Altar's open. I've used this poem a couple times. I'm going to use it again. I want to hear the poet say it. I wish I'd have wrote it. I'd have changed a little bit of it, but I still wish I'd have wrote it. I've dreamed dreams that never came true. I've seen them vanish at dawn, but I've realized enough of my dreams, thank God, to make me want to dream on. I prayed prayers when it seems no answer came, though I waited patient and long. But the answers have come to enough of my prayers to make me keep praying on. I've trusted a friend who's forsaken and left me to weep all alone, but I found enough of my friend's true blue to make me keep trusting on. I've sown many seeds that fell by the way for the birds to feed upon, but I've held enough golden sheaves in my hand to make me keep sowing on. I've fought in his battles when the odds seem unfair and I felt so weak and not strong, but there's been enough victories through his loving grace to make me want to fight on. I've walked in the darkness along the way and at times it seemed hope was all gone, but I've had enough light to shine through my day to make me want to walk on. I've preached when it seems all ears were deaf and the cry for truth was not known, but I've seen enough who were changed by the word to make me want to preach on. I've praised my God in spirit and truth. I've been mocked as one who put on, but I felt enough of his good pleasure in the worship I've shown to make me want to praise on. I've searched for the song that I could sing in my night, and at times I thought it just won't come. But I've heard just enough from that heavenly choir to make me want uh, to sing on. Uh, I've drained the cup of disappointment and pain and heard the enemy say, quit, you're all wrong. 
but I've sipped enough living water from the well of life uh, to make me want uh, to press on. Uh, I've never seen heaven with these eyes of mine that place for the blood washed throng but I've seen it in the face of those who've gone on before and it makes me want to go on back through I've never been there in this body of mine for these feet on pure gold to walk on but I've experienced enough of his Holy Ghost touch to make me want to reach on to shout on, uh, to pray on, to live on, to fight on, to strive on, to keep on, keeping on. They that wait uh, upon the Lord. Let's pour our hearts out to him right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. Go ahead, go ahead, let it flow. A praise, a song I'm not about. I'm not about to quit. Hallelujah. If you've had that thought, what you need to do right now is say, look, buddy, quit thinking stupid thoughts. Well, there's better thoughts to think than thoughts of quitting. No quitting. No discharge from this war. Not about to quit. Got to go on. Got to go through. Well, thank God right now you're still in the fight. I walked in this house today saying, thank you, Jesus. I'm still in the fight. Maybe a little tired. Maybe a little weary. That that's immaterial. Uh, I am still in uh, the fight. Uh, I still feel uh, the press. Uh, I still know uh, the desire. Uh, real waiting says uh, I never, never, never give up. Uh, whoo, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for your divine touch. <laughs> That's it. Go ahead and let it go. That's it. Go ahead and let it go. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Almighty God. Oh, reaching over, take a hold of somebody. We're going to pray, Father. It's our great privilege to understand what it means to wait on you. We're doing that right now as we pray another prayer. It's not that we haven't prayed these prayers. It's not that you haven't heard these prayers. And it's not that we have any inkling of doubt that you're working in these prayers. You told us to pray on, touch our community, touch homes, touch families, touch lives, touch our parish. Mighty God, minister to souls round about. Touch our leadership. Touch those that are in office here locally, God, that need you and need your help. God, help them. Raise up righteous leadership. If they're not righteous, they don't have the good of the people in mind, God. God, you raise up those that are. You work in our state. You move round about us, oh Lord, as our prayers are poured out to you. Touch our nation that right now, God, is in dire need of revival and visitation. We need a, a reawakening of consciousness. We need a reawakening of humility, of modesty. Mighty God, we need you to do these things, whatever it takes. God, we're just trusting in your hand, believing your word, claiming your promise as we do every day. Jesus, touch our world. Missionaries that have labored, God, those that have, that have already, God, we've already seen the pictures of services that are now gone by, a day that's now gone by, Lord. You minister and work mightily and powerfully all over this globe for your glory and your honor. Lift up the hands of apostolic ministries that love your truth, and there they wait, claiming, working, in your wonderful field and promise in Jesus' name. And all the church said amen.